doctor, one's a lawyer, and one's a minister. Actually, in the joke, it says he's a priest. We'll leave it that way. His dying request, all three of them, is that to show their gratitude for all the money he's leaving them, he wants each one of them to take out $10,000 and put it in an envelope and put it in his casket. So the day the funeral comes and each son dutifully puts a paper bag in the old man's casket. They meet up for lunch later. The priest shamefacedly confesses, I couldn't sleep a wink last night thinking of all the good our church could do with $10,000. Finally, I decided just to put some watered up newspaper in my bag and put it in there. Surely dad would understand. The doctor sighs in relief. I'm so glad you said that I couldn't you said that I couldn't stop thinking about the life-saving equipment our hospital could buy for $10,000. So I also <coughs> put some newspaper in the bag. He'll never know the difference. The lawyer frowns. He says, I'm ashamed of you both, really. I can't believe you guys. It was Dad's last request. They said, so you actually put the money in? The lawyer says, of course, my bag contained my personal check for $10,000. <laughs> Put a check in. Psalm 9, 9 to 10 says this, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed and a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Dear Lord, as we come to this part in our service where we feast on the morsels from your word, Lord, we pray that you will bless the word to the people. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're talking about strongholds today. I've never preached about strongholds before. I don't think I have. I suppose if I looked through all the archives of my sermons, maybe I'd find one. Did I ever preach strongholds? No. And she's always been there, so. But she wouldn't remember, probably. <laughs> Stronghold, fortress, tower of strength. And these are military terms. I wish Ken was here. He's a military kind of guy. Terms used in times of warfare. My wife and I visited Fort Niagara near Buffalo one time. That whole place is built from big stones. It, originally, I guess it was built from, from uh, wood from trees, but it's a stone fortification, amazingly strong. Um, but we are in constant warfare, spiritual warfare. I'm sure you can all agree with that. We have an enemy. I'm sure you can agree with that. The enemy hates you. That's an announcement if you didn't already know that. The enemy lies about you. If you didn't already know that. There's a war on. The enemy is picking up more agents in his bidding. I'm talking about human agents. Even in once conservative churches, and I mean churches that hold to Scripture, many of them no longer hold that homosexuality is a sin. He's picking up agents in his bidding. We, and I mean Christian, true Christian believers, are thought to be bigots, homophobes, etc., we're lied about. The devil lies about us. Faith is under attack. The battles are not coming. They're here. We're talking about strong towers, about refuges, and about strongholds. Nahum 1 7 says the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. In the King James, it says the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. God is a stronghold for us. The term stronghold appears at least 50 times in the Bible. 
It commonly, uh, it's commonly referred to as a fortress uh, with a difficult access. Uh, you can see that in Judges 6-2 at 1 Samuel 23-14. When King David first saw the city of Jerusalem, it wasn't Jerusalem then. It was an old, ancient, cheerless fortress inhabited by the Jebusites, the enemies of Israel. And no wonder it was twice called a stronghold in 2 Samuel 5 seven and nine a stronghold of the enemy a stronghold of the Jebusites and in first Samuel 23 14 it says David stayed in the wilderness strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Ziph day after day Saul searched for him but God did not give David into his hands Saul was trying to kill David. Saul actually threw a spear at him twice inside of his palace. So this was a stronghold of refuge from Saul, David's enemy. 2 Samuel 5, <clears throat> 7 and 9, and the New King James Version says, Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. <clears throat> Now David said on that day, whoever climbs up by way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, and in parenthesis it says, the lame and the blind who are hated by David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. And that happened to be Joab, and that's how Joab got to be the commander of David's armies. Therefore say, it continues, the blind and the lame shall not come in to the house. Now if we back up a verse to verse 6, it says the king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites who lived there. The Jebusites said to David, you will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can ward you off. They thought David cannot get in here. So David took it. And the Jebusites, who had referred to themselves as blind and lame, they were defeated. Then, in verse 9, David dwelt in the stronghold and called it the city of David. And David built all around from the Milo inward. So that had been the city of the Jebusites, and it became Jerusalem. It, the city of David is like an enclave to the one side, to the eastern side. Um, I don't know if it still can be seen that way or not, but that was, it became Jerusalem. So, and they said, you're not getting in here, but he did. And he took it, and that became Jerusalem. So the stronghold can be a place of refuge from the enemy. Or it can be a strong place for the enemy within your life. That is within your sin nature. So that's right, there's two ways to think of a stronghold. The stronghold that we get into when we get saved. He's our tower of strength. But we still have a sin nature and the enemy has a stronghold in that sin nature. The, two, the word strongholds is found once in the New Testament, used metaphorically by Paul in a description of the Christian spiritual battle. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. In other words, for the pulling down of strongholds. That's the stronghold of our enemy. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. You see, the world, which is Satan's domain, and, and the world wages war for a prize, which is your soul.
or the souls of your loved ones or the, any soul they can win. If they can win a soul of someone that's been a born again believing Christian, well, that's a big prize for them. The other souls they already have. In a physical sense, wars are fought with guns, bombs, and viruses. <laughs> wars are being fought with viruses now. And with uh, computers. And But the spiritual war is more important than the guns and bombs war because it's eternal. The weapons we fight with in verse 4 are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, to pull down the fortress of the enemy. If I could pull out a 9 millimeter or a 45 and shoot a demon, I would. If I could kick him in the face, I would. I'll tell you what. When someone gets saved, the enemy does get kicked in the face. Amen. The enemy gets a black eye yeah. when you pull somebody out of the flames of hell. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so exciting to do that. It's so exciting to do that. But when you give the devil a black eye, he recovers from that and he comes after you. You just have to understand that's going to happen and be prepared, right? But when you win a soul, he gets a black eye. He gets a smack in the face. <laughs> but instead, number five, verse five, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You can't take captive somebody else's thought. You're taking captive of your own thoughts because you still have a sin nature. And in that sin nature is the stronghold of the enemy. And you need to take, you need to pull it down. The arguments, the pretensions in every thought that is against God and his truth are the strongholds that we demolish. Salvation demolishes a stronghold. The enemy had you or someone else. He had us. That's how it starts out. He had a strong place within us. That is within our sin nature from which to do his harmful work. We were set free from the law of sin and death by the blood of Jesus. The stronghold of the enemy was pulled down. Now we are in a stronghold, and that stronghold is Jesus. But we still have a sin nature that needs to be conquered. 2 Samuel 22, 2 and 3. He said, this is referring to David, he said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people you save me. Now David had physical strongholds. He, you know, he and 600 men, and they went down to the stronghold. He had places of refuge, physical places in the desert. But he's talking about my refuge and my Savior. He's my stronghold. And from violent people, you save me. He, he knows about the spiritual stronghold as well as the fortresses. So point number one is pull down the stronghold. Even Paul had strongholds. Romans chapter 7, 15 to 20. I do not understand what I do. Paul's talking here. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but sin living in me. For I know 
that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. This was the great Paul. He's confessing that he still has a sinful nature, which we all do. We can all be tempted. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin living in me that does it. This is referring to the constant struggle we have of the, of the born-again believers against the sin nature that exists. You know, it's impossible for the devil to possess a Christian because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It can't be done. It's impossible. But we still have a sin nature, and that is a stronghold from which the enemy attacks us. So sin, so the sin living in his sinful nature is a stronghold. The sin nature doesn't go away. The sin nature doesn't go away. Temptations are still there. If there's anybody here that doesn't get tempted, you don't belong here. You belong in the cemetery. Because that's when the temptations will stop. Secret sins, nobody will know. Besetting sins are weaknesses. As soon as we get a victory over one temptation, another one comes along. The enemy never stops trying, never stops probing. And the fact that, you know, some sins nobody sees. So it's, it's, hatred is a sin. And unless you convert that into physical activity, nobody can see that you hate somebody. Envy is a sin. Jealousy is a sin. Those are sins, you know, unseen. But God sees him. My great-grandfather, and I never knew him, but I heard tell that he liked his whiskey. But his wife, my great-grandmother, forbade consuming alcohol in the house. So he had a hollow stump on the path down towards the barn. And he would stop and take a nip. Maybe he carried it into the barn so she, could see, she couldn't see that, but... His, his um, granddaughters, which were my dad's sisters, told about that. They were older than him, and they would go and stay, and, she's, and they told about that. He thought he was getting away with that. But God sees what you're doing. And Paul continues in Romans 7, 21 and 25. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my innermost being, I delight in God's law. And we're like that. Verse 23, but I see another law at work within me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. There's a tug of war going on between our sin nature and our wanting to do God's will. Then he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? In the King James, the body of this death, it says, Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he knew who his deliverer was. He just didn't leave him down there on that sour note. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law. But in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. God delivers us from the law of sin and death. Through holiness, we emerge from the sinful nature and embrace God's way and will for our life. This happens gradually through a process called sanctification. We don't just get some flu-flu dust on us and bang, we're holy. <laughs> It's a process, a gradual process, releasing your hold on the worldly desires and moving toward God and toward his perfect will. That process is sanctification and it leads to holiness. 
Point number two, prepare for the battle. Prepare, Ephesians 6, 11 to 17, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You know, we're, just because we're believers, we're not immune to the schemes of the devil. As a matter of fact, we're a more important prize to him than world people. So he comes after us. Verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Verse 14, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The flaming arrows or fiery darts, I think it's referred to in the King James, they are darts or arrows of temptation which are attacking all of us. And they are fired from the stronghold that lies within our sinful nature. Verse seven, take the, 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Point number three, get into the stronghold. The ultimate stronghold is Jesus. Psalm 16, 8 to 11, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life, you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. That verse number 10 there is a, um, is a prophecy about Jesus. Psalm 144, first two verses. Praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. So what did Paul do? He died out to sin every day. Romans 6, 11 to 14. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. I used to have a t-shirt that said that. I probably still have it, but I probably can't fit into it anymore. That was about 50 pounds ago. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. The stronghold of sin does not have mastery over us. We need to rise above the temptations of the sin nature and go to Jesus. Tear down the stronghold that's in your sin nature and get into the stronghold that is Jesus. He is my stronghold. He is my refuge. The closer to God you are in holiness, the less effective is the effort of the enemy in your life. Your sin nature in there is the stronghold of the enemy. But in Jesus is our stronghold. There are two strongholds. I want you to think about this as, do you have that song? Do you have that last song? 
haven't heard this song for a while, but I just want you to think about this and um, let this let this come in to your spirit as we as we play this song.